All right, so as you can see, section B is going to be slightly longer answers, which require some structure. Um, hopefully you'll notice with the red keywords that I highlight, um, that I'm trying to essentially get a mark on pretty much every line, or certainly within every sentence. Um, so there's no waffling, uh, we're straight to the point, trying to hit those key marks that you will uh, develop by doing the show my homework quizzes, checking through your notes, making your mind maps, all of those strategies that help. All right, so uh, 6A, uh, describe the theory of operant conditioning when applied to the learning of motor skills. It's essentially asking me two things here. First of all, it's asking me to describe the theory, um, and secondly, it's asking me to apply it to the learning of motor skills. And if we look on the Camden Learning Framework, we will see those two words, um, and, and it's asking us to, to give a full understanding um, of this this phrase, this idea of operant conditioning. Okay, so let's go. All right, first bit I'm going to put, uh, I'm going to define it. Operant conditioning is a method of learning uh, which involves manipulation of the environment to trigger the desired response. Um, that's the definition, but of course I want to give a um, a, a practical example to help illustrate that. A coach may place markers down in a tennis practice uh, for the player to aim at. That could be one example um, of operant conditioning. Uh, next sentence. Uh, this would help the player um, to learn, a, well that doesn't make sense, so I'll just change that, uh, to learn by connecting or associating the marker um, on the court with the direction of his or her shot. So now we're picturing the, the tennis coach placing the markers down the line or in the corners of the court. Um, the SR bond would be strengthened, helping the player to produce the correct response once the markers are taken away, which of course in a match they will be. Um, and that will help him to direct shots into the corners um, of the court. Next marks. The responses of the players would be shaped or modified over time and through trial and error. The coach could also help shape the response by feeding the ball in a regular direction. So picture the coach standing there feeding the ball onto the backhand of the tennis player. Uh, this wouldn't normally happen in a match. So that's another example of um, operant conditioning. This would not occur during normal practice or games with the regular directions of ball travel. So it's quite hard to use operant conditioning in a game situation because uh, the coach can't shape or modify the environment. The ball's coming at all different angles and speeds. Uh, next sentence. Um, the response would or could be further conditioned. I think I wrote both in there, so I'm just going to take one out. Um, could be further conditioned uh, through positive reinforcement. And I've just put in brackets just to make the reader know that I understand what positive reinforcement's about. It's about praise. Uh, following successful outcomes and negative reinforcement, in brackets, removal of praise or punishment. And this could be the coach criticism um, following unsuccessful outcomes. So you'll see that with the exception of this line here, every line, uh, sorry, and this line here, every line that I've written um, has a mark in. Um, and of course, there's only six marks available. Again, we need to check the marks available. And if it were me uh, writing this as I just have, I would plan my answer out um, before I actually started writing to make sure I've got six key things about operant conditioning um, alongside the practical examples that I can explain. All right, let's have a look at another one. All right, assess the advantages and, in bold, and disadvantages of using extrinsic feedback when learning a motor skill. So again, first of all, we have to identify um, extrinsic feedback, okay? Now, it's not extrinsic motivation, which is about rewards and trophies and medals and all those things. It's extrinsic feedback, so be careful not to get the two mixed up. Um, a little bit of time to think and make sure that you've got the right uh, concept or idea is important in exams. And then we see that this is for four marks, so we're going to plan our answer. Uh, this model answer will contain more than those four marks uh, to help you along the way. All right, so extrinsic feedback comes from outside. Examples include video analysis or coach feedback. It can be either positive or negative, and it's attempting to strengthen or weaken um, SR bonds. And you can see straight away I've picked up three, maybe four marks 
in the first two, three sentences. All right, next part. And then that's all quite factual because I, I'm defining what extrinsic feedback is. We now need to talk about the advantages. So here they are. One advantage is that for learners in the cognitive and associative stage of learning, the outside or expert advice can help them understand the motor skill better. So a good quality coach with giving his advice can help that learner to pick up the skill more quickly. Um, this is especially the case if the extrinsic feedback helps the performer to recognize and focus upon their, their own intrinsic feedback when producing the skill. So if the coach can identify uh, and help the performer to focus on how that movement feels as they give them some feedback, uh, that can essentially have, uh, I guess, a double benefit. Okay, next advantage, extrinsic feedback from a coach can also be a source of positive reinforcement. So the coach can um, encourage the performer um, through the feedback that he gives them, identifying whether they've done things well or whether they're close um, and so on. Next sentence. Of course, here we're talking about the disadvantages because I remember that bold word. They wanted the advantages and the disadvantages. Here we go. However, it can be less effective if the performer, if the performer uh, becomes dependent on the guidance from outside. So if the performer just relies on the coach, that can be a, a criticism or a disadvantage of the, the, the coach's feedback. Um, because they don't learn to recognise the intrinsic feedback. Um, the intrinsic feedback, as we know, I've put in brackets there, um, this will develop kinesthesis, which is the feeling of the skill movement uh, through the production of the skill. Okay, so loads of marks there, and I just threw one in at the end, um, just in case it's on the mark scheme and something else uh, that I've written may not be. Uh, here it is. It's also less effective for autonomous learners, um, which is obviously the, the opposite of the advantage um, for extrinsic feedback. Don't forget to mention sometimes those, those opposites. Um, some mark schemes don't allow them, some mark schemes don't, uh, do allow them, um, but if you've got the space, drop it in there. Okay, hope that was helpful.